All right, this is going to be another video on antibiotics. These antibiotics are specifically going to be targeting the bacterial ribosome. Now, just as a quick recap, the ribosome in bacteria is typically made of a 30S smaller subunit and a 50S larger subunit. And the reason that these antibiotics work is because this subunit differs significantly in structure and size from what is found in eukaryotic organisms. I believe eukaryotes have a 40S and a 60S, but here we see the bacterial ribosome with a 30S and 50S. So let's jump right into the classes of antibiotics that target this bacterial ribosome. First one we have on the list here are the aminoglycosides. Uh, two examples of these that are commonly used are streptomycin and gentamicin. Aminoglycosides specifically target this 30S subunit, and they are bactericidal, meaning that they do kill the bacteria. They don't just stop the growth. They actively kill bacteria. There, is a, there are a couple ways that bacteria have uh, prevented the use of aminoglycosides. The first is that they modify the drug itself, the aminoglycoside itself. This is done through phosphorylation, adenylation, or acetylation of the aminoglycosides. So phosphorylation is, of course, adding a phosphate group. Adenylation is adding an AMP molecule. And acetylation is adding an acetyl group. And these would all render the aminoglycosides inactive. Another method to confer resistance to this class is by altering the ribosome. This could be a methylation of the rRNA in the ribosome, or it could be a mutation of the protein in the ribosome. And of course, one third way, and this is, this is pretty much a common theme for a lot of antibiotics, uh, to, to stop aminoglycosides from working, you can increase the cell's pumping of this antibiotic outside of the cell, increasing the efflux of the aminoglycosides. Second class we have here are the tetracyclines. Now the first tetracycline made is, was of course called tetracycline. Uh, newer one is called doxycycline. These also bind to the 30S subunit and uh, render it inactive. These however are bacteriostatic, meaning that they prevent bacteria from growing. They stunt the growth of bacteria. They do not necessarily actively kill the bacteria. You can get resistance to a tetracycline by increasing the efflux, again, pumping out more of the antibiotic out of the bacterial cell, or by production of ribosome protection proteins, which prevents the mechanism of action of tetracyclines. A third class are the chloramphenicols. There's no, uh, I didn't put any specific drug names on there, but this is the class. This one binds to the 50S subunit, and chloramphenicols are bacteriostatic, so again, they stop the growth. Resistance for these are a little different from the tetracyclines. It's actually an activation of the antibiotic class by methylation, so a little similar to what we saw with the aminoglycosides. If we add a methyl group, uh, which, which wasn't on this list, this had three different groups, um, but if we add a methyl to this group, it, it renders them inactive. Next, we have a class called the macrolids, and two examples of these are erythromycin and azithromycin. I think of these as the romycins, because we see a lot of mycins, but the romycins are macrolids, so we, we have that, that similar rho there. These also bind the 50S, and they are also bacteriostatic. I'm kind of going to go through the next three pretty quickly and then talk about resistance to those together. The next class is lincosamides, like clindamycin. Lincosamides also bind to the 50S subunit. Lincosamides are pretty unique because they are effective against anaerobes. All the other ones that we talked about are effective mainly against bacteria that use oxygen. Lincosamides are unique because they work against anaerobes. And then another class are the streptogramins A and B. These are two classes that act in the same pathway to have a synergistic effect. Streptogramins A and B also bind to the 50S subunits, and individually they are bacteriostatic, but when you use them together, they are bactericidal. Now, let's talk about a resistance mechanism for the macrolids, the lincosamides, and the streptogramins. This is called MLSB, uh, standing for macrolid, lincosamide, and streptogramin B. 
there's a gene that can be turned on that can be induced called the ERM gene. And this gene codes for a protein, of course, that methylates the ribosome. Once you methylate the ribosome, it prevents the mechanism of the macrolids, lincosamides, and streptogramin B, rendering the ML and SB antibiotic classes inactive. So this is called MLSB resistance. And one last class that we have are oxazolidinones. One example of this is linezolid. This is a relatively new class of antibiotics. It also binds to this 50S subunit, and it's another example of an antibiotic that is bacteria static, that stunts the growth of bacteria, that prevents growth. So these first two up here all have a mechanism. Uh, I haven't gotten too, too specific about it, but they all bind, these two up here, bind to the 30S subunit, while these five down here all bind to the 50S subunit. And this has been a list of the classes of antibiotics that target the bacterial ribosome. Thanks for listening.